Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is gonna to be the second installment of the how I protect my collection videos. This is going to go over the binders, the sleeves, and how I protect my graded cards as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so to kick things off, we're gonna start with my nine pocket binders. This is going to be from Card Guardian. I really like this brand because of the quality of the exterior. In terms of every binder that I've ever used, I think Card Guardian has the best quality. It really feels premium, it's very plush, and in my opinion, I think price-wise, they're very, very competitive. So in these ones, I actually house my very big sets. So for example, Dark Revelation 1, uh, DB1, things like that. I don't have too much space for things like this because if I was to put these in like four pocket binders, it would just get too crazy and too troublesome. So I decided to put all of them in these nine pockets. So far, I've collected all of Dark Beginning 1. Okay, so this is every single card in this set. Dark Beginning 2, every single card in this set. Dark Revelation one, every card in this set. So the reason that some of them are orange and some of them are silver is the silvers I would consider to be near mint. So maybe PSA eight to nine, while the yellows are PSA nine minimum. So to talk about the sleeves here, I use the silver sleeves from the original Yu-Gi-Oh game. I just use these because I like the way that they fit the cards. I think it's pretty much perfect. I mean, maybe the top could be a little smaller, but I actually don't mind that because it prevents dust from going in very easily. I really like this and I think it fits well because Dark Beginning 1 and 2 have silver boxes, so the sleeves fit really well with them and that's what covers DB1 and DB2. These are also some of the older Ultra Pro sleeves. They are called Spectrum. They used to sell these like in regular stores and hobby stores, but they discontinued them because people would use them in tournament play and they aren't cut exactly perfect, all of them. A lot of people would put like their best cards in the sleeve that's a little bit higher and they would <laughs> try to cheat that way. But anyway, they basically discontinued these. You don't really find them online and I was very lucky to find a friend who collected these a long time ago <laughs> and basically he hooked me up with what he had left and every now and then they might come up used but for the most part I don't ever really see them come up for sale sealed. All right so this is the first binder that I use. I have to note another thing though is on these binders right here the card guardians especially the black one these do not house 360 cards they actually house 540 i believe this makes the binder extremely tight if you fill it up completely i'm not really a big fan of the 540 even though you get way more value for your money i just think that if they made the spine just a little bit bigger it would have done a much better job housing 540 cards because i'm not against that the only problem is you know if the spine is the same thickness as 360 you're gonna have a problem. I just think that's kind of not a wise decision. They could have definitely made the spine a little bit thicker, but for some reason they didn't. I put up with it because again, I love the exterior of this. When you touch this, you just feel quality. I love it, like I love everything about it. Even the branding right here, it just works great. All right, next up is my second and last nine pocket binder. This is the second one that I have. I don't have anything else. This is the Magic Formula from Imperium Duelist, I believe. I really love this because I love the card itself. I love Magic Formula, I love the rarity, I love the way it was used in the show. I just think that this binder is really well done. Another thing that I really like about this is actually the white pages. The white pages here do a really good job contrasting with the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. The sleeves that I use in here are the second type of Ultra Pro you know, the super hollow sleeves. These are called Ultra Pro Fantasy Sleeves. So you can tell because the pattern is, it's a little bit different than the Spectrum. I mean, the Spectrum goes more horizontal while this one goes more vertical. These are also extinct. You don't really find them up for sale and they fit just as perfect as the Spectrum ones do. I use these for my promo cards. I use them for 
the sets that have the reddish outer box, like for example, Pharaoh's Servant, Magician's Force, I have just enough to house my collection and I really like the way that everything looks. The red contrasts really well with the white and I like the white pages. I think the white pages do a much better job than the black pages. And that's the main reason that I really love this binder. It's the main reason I kept this binder. I use my promo cards in this one because usually they come in sets of three. I just basically put them in there and they do an excellent job with the presentation. I mean, <laughs> just look at it, it looks fantastic. So as you can see, there is a lot of empty spots here for a lot of the cards that I'm missing but I'm checking them off slowly one at a time. Here we finish the video game section, basically all the video games from Yu-Gi-Oh! and Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And then we move on to the tin cards basically. Here we have all of the BPTs. We go in order here. You've seen this before if you checked up my other binder videos. Here we have the CTs. Here we get to the special edition card. So basically any special releases that were released during that era. So here, for example, you have the Duelist Pack, Secret Rares, IOC, RDS, TLM. Here you have EEN and then the SOIs are missing. And then we get to the sneak peeks card. So basically this binder is anything with limited edition on it. I mean, if you couldn't really tell, but these are the sneak peeks. These are in blue sleeves. And these are what I use for sets like Dark Crisis, Legacy of Darkness. We move on to here. This is the book promos, stuff that were released in the books, like the manga books right here. These are Yu-Gi-Oh! R. These are Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. This is the YAP or the anniversary packs. This is the up to Kazuki Takahashi. And then we get on to the Jump magazines. I'm not planning to collect all of them. This is just up to 18, I believe, that I'm collecting. And then some one-offs like the Ori Calcos and Genesis Dragon. I started on Lost Art, and this is the only one I have. And then here we get to some extras that I house. These are basically legendary collection. If you like the fit of these fantasy sleeves and you can't find these, there is an alternative. These are actually the exact same fit, but they don't have any patterns. And I use that for everything here. This is my legendary collection. Here I have some extras like, here's DR04, Blue Eyes SDK, some random cards and <laughs> Here I have TLM Euros. And guys, let me tell you something. This blue right here, okay, is awesome. Like it looks so good on these cards. I think this blue really complements Yu-Gi-Oh cards really well. I definitely, definitely recommend this one right here. That's basically my extra binder as well as my promo cards. It's all housed in here. Let's get on to my core sets. In terms of binders that I use, I use Ultimate Guard for most of my core sets, especially my first 11 sets. All of them are Ultimate Guard. Every single one is the exact same four pocket style. Everything is black pages. It's just different colors that match the set. Now, the problem that I have with Ultimate Guard is the lack of variance in color, okay? They have, I believe, six colors. So red, black, green, purple, blue, and beige and they don't have any others. They had gray initially, but they discontinued it. So you have six colors to choose from, and I have 11 sets, and I would have loved some variants, like a light blue, for example, because if you look, for example, at my other sets right here, so this is my Dark Crisis, and you can see that the blue fits perfectly well with the color of the binder, but when you use something like Legend of Blue Eyes, it's not so hot. <laughs> I do wish that they had a lighter blue. It's not very difficult to do, and I know other carriers provide it, so that brings me to the next topic, which is why I choose Ultimate Guard. There is the option of Vault X. The problem that I have with them is the damn branding is so ugly. Like, they have a big Vault X logo tramp stamped at the bottom of the binder, and then on the back, you have a lock. Like, why? <laughs> I'm kind of 
forced to go with Ultimate Guard because even though Vault X has more colors, I just cannot stand the binder design. Like I, I just think it's so ugly. So this is Ultimate Guard. I do wish that I had uh, <laughs> more colors, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. And this is the only option I have available in Canada. The second type of binder that I use is called Itime. And in Canada, you have the Ultimate Guard, you have these guys, and then you have Vault X. And I will not use Vault X, so I'm kind of forced to use this. Here, I put all of my GX cards. So you've seen this binder before. I don't have any fancy sleeves in purple, so I do use the same thing that I use for my Labyrinth of Nightmare, the plain purple right here. And again, I'm gonna link the seller that sells these size sleeves because these size do not exist anymore. Like Ultra Pro does not make them anymore like this. So yeah, I mean, that's what I use for my GX binders. I have not gotten to the point where I need a second one so far. I'm still finishing Elemental Energy and Cybernetic Revolution. However, I do have another variant of this, which is in black. And I'll probably use that when the time comes and I get to like Shadow of Infinity and so on. All right. So if I had my pick, would I go with these? Honestly, no. Okay. There is a better binder out there. And I think that they're probably making the best product in terms of just overall aesthetic as well as a combination of quality. And they are called Dex Protection. The problem with Dex is that they never have anything in stock. So Dex would be my very first option if I had my choice. But when I started building these binders, they were completely out of stock. I still don't remember if they have restocked in the past year, to be honest with you, like in terms of four pocket binders. So I have to go with Ultimate Guard because availability is just as important as design. I mean, you can design the best product out there if you can't even get it to the consumer. There's really no point. I do want to preface though, that none of these binders are on the same quality as Card Guardian. However, I don't know if they even produce for pocket. I mean, I've never seen them. If I do find them, I'm definitely going to try them out because I love the exterior feeling of those Card Guardian binders, man. They just feel so premium, so plush, perfect. <laughs> but for now, this is what I have and it would just be too expensive if I was to switch them out. So I'm sticking with this, and this is what I have in terms of cards, binders, and sleeves, okay? These are what I use. I do not double sleeve because the thickness of that fantasy sleeves are so thick that if you put anything there, it's just gonna get too muddy, like the picture is not gonna be as clear, and you know, when you're talking about these, there's already a plastic sleeve here. There's the plastic sleeve on the card. With three, you basically lost <laughs> the overall aesthetic appeal of the cards. So yeah, that's how I protect my raw cards. All right, last but not least is how I protect my graded cards. I think that this is by far one of the best designs ever in terms of accessories. It is absolutely super well made, number one. And number two, it takes up so little space. Imagine this, that case that you saw in my video where I showed my collection with the red lining on the inside, this thing right here is almost a third of the size and it houses 60 cards. Let's take a look on the inside and let me just show you the brilliant design of this thing. So number one, it's made by Palms Off Gaming. I believe they partnered up with Card X and they brought this product to the United States and North America in general. It fits graded cards perfectly. It fits 60 PSA cards. It fits a little bit less for Becky because Becky is a little bit thicker. My whole collection that you saw in that briefcase fits in here and then there's still a little bit of room. I mean, this thing is incredibly well made. If I was to improve it in one thing, I would probably just improve the way that this cutout right here I just feel like they could have cut it a little bit more just so that you can see the labels a little bit better. The second thing that I would do to actually improve this design is I would get rid of a lot of the branding. I think the branding is a little too much. <laughs> I feel like this is just enough. You don't really need that big P with the tree there. I mean, I, I don't think it's necessary. I think it's a little obnoxious, but otherwise I really, really like this product. 
I actually don't just house my PSA cards in here. I actually house a lot of my super high-end cards like for example, Black Rose Dragon Ghost Chair. These cases are made by Konami. They're officially licensed. They're from the Prismatic God Box. They go for around 15 bucks. I really like them. I mean, if you're not trying to go the graded card route, this is definitely the perfect solution for that. So yeah, that's basically my whole protection guide. I don't really use anything else in terms of protecting my cards. I do have plans of my own to start making my own things because I have some ideas that I feel like the market would really like. Those are in the works right now. You can stay tuned for that. And that's basically that. Hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully you learned something. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>